Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be going through creating models in Blockbench and then implementing them into game engines. So for this specific tutorial, I'm going to be using Construct 3 because that is the actual engine I'm using for a current project. Now, as you can see, I've just opened Blockbench. There will be a link in the description if you've not already got that. So just install Blockbench. And then this is just an example model I've got here now, which I'm using for a mobile game I'm creating. So I'm going to be using this as the base for my example, as a lot of people, you might be coming from different game engines, or even if you want to create models for your Minecraft servers, things like that, this will all apply to you. So this is a simple pig model I've made for my game. And then I'll also just show you a quick example of that. So you can see kind of like get an idea of what, why we'd be doing this. All right, guys, so I've just opened the project. And as you can see, these are the models that I created in Blockbench and I've implemented into my game engine. Now, if you are using Construct 3, we will also be using a plugin later on called 3D Object, which will also be linked in the description. And this will allow you to add advanced, uh, you know, models to your game engine as Construct 3 by default will allow you to do this. All right, guys. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open Blockbench. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new project. So I already have this open, but all you have to do is go to File, New. And for this example, so if you're using the game engine, we're going to be doing a generic model. Once we've done this, we are going to be seeing the texture size and also the name. So I'm just going to call this sheep. I'll be creating a sheep model for this example. And then for the texture size, so this really is going to depend on how large you want your models and things like that. Now I realized this at first where I accidentally made it too small. So I had to learn that the hard ways, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set mine to 128 by 128. That's the size I'm using. And you've seen the example, which is why I showed you that. So you can get a good idea. Um, if you're going to have larger models, you'll want to bump that up. You might want to do 512 by 512, something like that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is this right here. And now, if you're not new, if you're new to Blockbench, um, you know, used it before, it's really simple. It's a very, it's a very straightforward engine, and it's also why I've kept this model here just to keep going back and giving examples. So, it's as simple as you have your textures, and you're you're just putting cubes together basically. And you can even, so over here, you can just right click and you can even just add cubes and you can just manipulate them to keep it as simple as possible. All right, so for this example, I'm going to be going back and forth and I'm basically going to replicate what I've already learned and done here. And I'm going to be kind of changing this into a sheep, right? But I'm just going to be showing you how I did that along the way. And then after this, we'll be going through how to export and implement into the game engine. So here you can see we've just got a simple cube. So you right click, add a cube. And this is 32 in size. So we've got 32 width. And height so what we're going to do is right click add a cube and it'll bring it in here and you can just go to size and we can just go 32 by 32 by 32 or whatever size you'd like to use and now there also are many dedicated block bench videos available too but i did find that this is a very straightforward engine like you can just play around with this and just add cubes and things like that and it's fairly simple to figure out i am just going to keep going through it though just so you know if you're wanting to build something similar if not, you could skip forward until it gets to the point where I'm actually exporting this model. That's also fine. But yeah, this really is as simple as just adding cubes and moving them around and then adding a texture to them. So we could add another cube here. This could be the nose. One thing I'll also just show you is you can also do groups, which makes sense. So you can create a group and just call this, like, so I'll call it sheep. And then you can drag all your shapes into that. So again, you'd get another cube. And then we just re we just reposition the size. So for this again, I'm just going to make it 32 by 32 for now. Drag this out. And I'm just going to be going back to this other model because I need to keep things kind of a similar size. So this one here, so this is 16, 10 by 4. So you just 16, 10, 4. And then one other thing I wanted to show you is, so... What we need to do is, when you want all your pieces to actually be stitched together, there's a tool up here called Vertex Snap. This is how we're going to keep our things actually snapped together. And all you have to do is, so you'll see these points here, just select a point, and then just select a point on your other shape like this. And as you can see, this is now snapped to place. And that just means you're not going to have any seams when you export it. So once you've done that, then again, we just, we just position... And you can just you can even just drag this around, move it like this, or you can do it in the editor, like such. 
All right, guys, so now I'm just going to try focus on this. I'm going to speed this part up, and I'm just going to model this because I don't, I'm not sure if this is going to add much to the video or not. But I'm just going to speed this up if you want to watch the process, and I will get back to you when we are working on the texture. guys so this will do for now i might change this later but it might work for now so as you can see all i've done though is i have just it's just cubes so i mean it really is just a bit of practice i mean this is this is really simple so to actually apply the textures we'll select the whole thing and we just want to click create texture and then so we'll call this texture and the pixel density we'll go one to eight rearrange the uv just keep it and also that's another thing actually so one thing to do is turn on padding so one thing if, if you're doing game engines like this like we're doing here i noticed like if you don't have the padding you're going to get bleeding and there's another common issue that i had later which i'll show you where even with the padding it will the model will look fine in blockbench and then when you export the model and put it into your game engine you're going to have gaps in your there's going to be like a one pixel gap in all the scenes so to fix this, what I did is, I'll show you in a minute, but I just eventually, like the quickest solution is, just pick a base colour which is similar to your everything else and just drag it across in the background. Anyways, keep this as is. So you can see we've now got a texture anyways. And it's just applied it to all our models and you can see all the different faces up here. And we can drag this out and you can just see this. So for texturing this any anyways, what you can do is, you can do it directly here, or they do have a, so there's a paint, paint tool here. And what's great about this is you can just paint directly on the model. I really enjoy this for all the basic colors. So I will, I will, I will like draw the basic colors in here. And then I will export this texture into Illustrator. And that's when I'll then add the extra details. But if you're doing pixel art, for example, then I'd recommend just doing this all in here. Because that's what it's designed for in the first place. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a dark color. And then real quick, we can just go through some of the tools here as well. So brush tool straightforward you can draw up here you've got your size so you can set the size opacity and the softness so for this i'll do 10 and i'm right now i'm just going to do the hooves i'm just going to draw some feet on and then once i've got started i'll speed this up another tool that's like i've realized one of the more useful things as well is just holding shift i realize if you just hold shift and click two points you can very quickly just do something like this so click shift click and this made it a lot faster for me to get this done One final useful thing I've, I've learned from this as well, because I'm just trying to think of some, you know, useful, like what I've, my, my process, how I'm doing this, is there's a mirror tool here. And this is great, so you can have, have both X or, or Z. And um, this is great, because now if that's turned on, it just saves you time. Click, click, and as you can see, it does it on the other side. So this just speeds up again. Like this. Then one final thing I'll go through as well before doing that, and I'll just speed up again, is is the gradient tool. Now I realize you could do gradients in here, which helped massively. So let's say you, we have a sheep. This is not going to be the final color, but we want to fill this in. So we'll, we'll make it white for now for this example. But then just to add extra detail, we want gradients. So if I just pick a, a slightly darker color for now, like this, we can select the gradient tool, and you can simply just click and drag all the way up. And it just adds a nice gradient to the texture. This was a great addition that I found not too long ago where it just adds more detail to the models. They just look a bit less flat. If it was all just flat color or just white, it doesn't quite match the rest of my game as I add gradients in that too. That's another cool feature. And again, because we've got the mirror turned on as well, as you can see, it does it to the other sides. So this mirror tool is really useful for the gradients because that means it's always going to be the same, which I really liked. And then again, I could just start with that color instead. Go on the sides, select those ones, select the darker color again, gradient, drag up, and that'll just add some some shading. Okay, great. So for the purpose of this video, I'm actually just going to stop here because I'm going to get too carried away. I'm just I'm just working on this now, so I'm just going to stop here. I will show you how to export it, 
and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so now we're going to go through how to export your textures and actually your model into the game engine. So textures straightforward. All we need to do is head over to the textures here. Make sure you're on the edit page. And we're just literally going to click the save icon here. Texture, you can see here, sheep texture, just click save. So just like that, you've saved your texture out. That's that's done. Next, all I want to do is, so to actually export our model, we're going to make sure we have the whole thing selected up here. We're going to file, export. We want to ex click this top one here. So we want a GLTF model. Now again, make sure with your different engines, if you're doing Minecraft or Unity or something like that, Unreal, any different mod engine, they probably will accept these as well, the other engines, but some might prefer an object model. But anyways, export this. And then for the export scale of this one, I'm setting this to one. I also found like this was best for me, but you might have to play around with this. So I made I made the model larger, the, the texture larger, and then we're gonna export scale as one. This is also just gonna stop warping, things like that. I don't need animations. And also make sure embed textures enabled. If you're using Construct 3 for this, this this here, embed textures needs to be enabled for the model and um, for the plugin, sorry. So anyways, keep everything like that. Confirm. Desktop. It's called cheap. That's fine. Alright guys, so this next section is now going to be a little bit more specific to Construct 3. It will also apply to other game engines too, but in terms of implementing this into an engine, I'm using Construct 3 as, as an example. And so if you're using Construct 3 anyways, what you need to do is you need a 3d object plugin the link to that will be in the description you'll need to download that and then to import that what you need to do is you need to head over to menu we need to go to view and add-on manager and in here you'll simply just click in the bottom left install new add-on and you'll just find the file you've downloaded from the link select that it's installed so great once you've done that now what we need to do is so if i head over to my object repository you can see all my objects here so these here, these are the models that I've created using this. So I have one here good to go, which is called sheep. Now to import this, all you do is right click, insert an object. And as you can see, we now have 3D object. Click that, it will give you something like this, except I've already got kind of a template here. Now to get this working, what you want to do is scroll down in your project view here, where all your files are. And we want to find files. So inside of here, this is where we're going to install all of our actual objects. So as you can see, I already have mine here. I've got my chicken, cow, and my pig that I've previously made. And we're just going to go new, import files. All right, guys, so I've selected the sheet file. We're going to click import. Now that's, that's here, we can now go over to our objects we've created. I've got the mine's called sheep 3D. And then we're going to scroll down. And over here, we can see in properties, we can see the path. We want to make sure this maps, uh, matches perfectly the actual name of your model. So we want to call this sheep gltf like this. Okay, so once you've done that, now we want to actually edit the image. So we'll click on this. And then we just want to select the texture that we've created. So for now, we've just got this placeholder texture like this. And this is going to look really dodgy at first. But this is because it's not actually updated the model for me. Yours might not look like this. So one thing I've noticed is sometimes we need to actually um, close this down and reopen it. So if we close the engine right now and open it back up, it should look okay. All right, great. There we go, guys. I've just reopened it. And as you can see, our texture's working. The one issue I'll show here is, which I mentioned before, is as you can see, we've got these gaps. So to fix that, what I did is, I just, I'll show you on this one is, I went into Illustrator, I dragged the texture in, or any other program you could use, by the way. You know, just pick a, a, an editing program. And I just dragged it over. And I just picked a color that actually matches. Because you can see here, this is the, this is the padding we added. So I just dragged that in and that fixed the issue. So you can see we now don't have any of these gaps. Previously with the other ones, I manually, on every edge, I copy and paste it out for one pixel. That takes quite a lot of time, by the way. So either way, if you've got more time, that way might be more specific, but this worked fine. So yeah, there we have it, guys. We've modeled and exported our models from Blockbench and we've imported them into Construct 3. Or if you're using other game engines, hopefully you've figured out how to do it on their engines. So yeah, that's it for this episode. If you want anything more in depth for me to take this any further, let me know. I'm not too sure where to go with this, but I'm trying to find other things to do in Construct as well. So yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Take care, and I'll see you later.